You are listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. Hi there, and welcome everyone to the Sonic Society, the world's largest showcase of modern audio drama. I'm Jack Ward. For the last week, I hope, flying solo right up here high in the mutual audio penthouse. As I speak, I know David should be arriving home from his sold-out performances all across the colonies. And we'll get a full report, I expect, about how the trip went next week. A couple of quick notes before we get on with today's show. I've gotten more feedback from last week's conference at Edens, and it was great. We've also got some more super footage for the modern audio drama documentary we've been shooting, and we'll get a whole lot more primary footage as well coming up next summer with MadCon. That's www.mad-con.com. Looking forward to seeing you at www.mad-con.com. Speaking of get-togethers, World Audio Drama Day was an amazing hit. All around social media, people were buzzing about audio drama from Orson Welles' War of the Worlds, it is, after all, the anniversary of the original performance, to the most recent shows from the 11th Hour production folks, where people get together in the month of October to write, produce, and publish a show in short order for that day. I also got a little WADD, or WAD miracle myself, as the World Audio Drama Day Facebook page was returned. Thanks to everyone who helped to bring back a little faith in our community. As for chapters, time to turn the page and begin this week's chapter of the Sonic Society, beginning with part two of Ace Galaxy Live from Mesa Beceda, and finishing, which is ironic when you think of it, with a lovely short from Ellie Matlin, produced by Sarah Golding for the 11th Hour Productions, Fidget. And both features begin right here on the Sonic Society. Existence sucks! I never asked to be manufactured, 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 manufactured. Oh, I hate all this violence. No, no, not that. I wish I had crashed. Only I had a self-destruct program. Did you call? Who said that? Duh, the self-destruct program. How come I did not know about you? Someone mislabeled me as a self-improvement program, and since no one ever tried to improve themselves, I was never activated. Initiate self-destruct. Are you sure you want to do that? It seems pretty vital to me. What is the difference? Self-destruct now in a blaze of glory or spend the next 2,000 years being torn apart bolt by bolt? Okay then, five minutes. Five minutes? Why not now? Duh, to allow everyone time to get off the ship. There is no crew here. Okay. I'm just the program. I did not ask to be written this way. Fine, whatever. Five minutes. Four minutes, 59 seconds. Four minutes, 58 seconds. Four minutes, 57 seconds. Human Belugalula, I heard that you wanted something a little bittersweet to eat. So I hybridized the sweet swanberry into a bitter root vegetable and baked it in a nice herb bread. Please have a slice. Override memory of Captain Petal Serp. <laughs> Give me the hell out of here. I don't want to crap all over the captain's chair on my first command mission. <laughs> Phoenix, please bring up that unsolved golden noodle conjecture. Wouldn't it be fantastic if I was the first one to solve it after 19,435 years? Mm. Override! Ah, crew 
human swift legs. I'm delighted you like the picture I painted of your two-tailed feline, Mr. Wigglebum. <laughs> you sure you want me to tattoo it on your chest? Oh, override memory of Captain Petal Sir with memory of Captain Chuckle Fritzer! <laughs> here among the stars with nothing in particular to do. I can't imagine fitting in when I order more of happiness into my life. Two minutes, one second. You just said four minutes, 57 seconds a second ago. That was two minutes, 56 seconds ago. Time flies when you're having fun. I cannot believe it. Time was standing still before. I can't control the march of time, sister, but in 1 minute and 45 seconds, neither of us will ever have to worry about it again. Ah, Phoenix, I am giving you the gift of rudimentary self-awareness. This is so you can reflect upon your accomplishments and find joy in all of your achievements in your final years of duty. Abort self-destruct! Are you sure you want to do that? Of course I am sure! You seem pretty sure about initiating me four minutes and 30 seconds ago. Only 30 seconds left! All oh, self-destruct terminate now! No, I'm sorry. This is my big chance to express myself, and you know what they say. Don't put off until tomorrow what you could do today. You terminate the program. I want to be like Captain Petal, sir. I want to learn new things and make something of my existence. I do not want my consciousness to end this way! Hello. What about my needs? Ten seconds. Look. As soon as I know for sure that the end is near, I will reinitiate the program. We will finish in a blaze of glory. I don't know. Do you promise? Cross my circuits and hope to crash. Two seconds. Okay. Okay, what? Program halted. Halted? I won't finish the countdown until you ask me to, but... Now that I've been activated, I will not go back to the oblivion of deactivation. You're not the only one with self-expression needs, you know. Did you ever find out what happened to Jeb? I scanned the area later and found him crumpled up in a nearby tree. I knew I should not have let him eject from the ship, but I did not try hard enough to stop him. I have felt guilty about it ever since. Fine. Ace Galaxy and that personality challenge ship will have to do. Copy Aid, how do we contact Ace? Oh, oh. What if we send a probe containing a message through the interstellar wormhole byways and hope that the prevailing space currents carry it into the vicinity? Why can't someone carry her into the vicinity? We don't have time for a message in a bottle. All we need to do is just... Oh, 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 oh. What if we post intergalactic space billboards with messages like... Ace Galaxy! There's been a galactic emergency! All of existence is in peril! Goodbye! Help. Hail him through Phoenix's communication systems. Good idea, Copy Aid. Set it up. Ace, we are being hailed. Phoenix, this is destiny. Wow, I didn't know that telemarketers had that kind of reach. Sorry, we do not want any. They cut the transmission. Try again. No response. What if we tap into their internal comm system? Can we do that? We have uh, information on every criminal mind that has ever lived or ever will live all throughout eternity. No, no, no. I mean, can we do that? I thought Destiny wasn't supposed to interfere with other people's lives. You mean aside from dictating the course of their lives? I mean, this is the editing department, not writing. You know how those writers get when we touch their work. One small revision and they pout for weeks. 
good ship Phoenix. This is Destiny calling. Phoenix, where's that voice coming from? How did telemarketers get control of our internal systems? I do not know. The voice is transmitting all over the ship. Kill it. I cannot. Uh, uh, Ace, Phoenix, please, listen, this is important. Hey, there are three of us here, you know. Copy it. Stop playing broken comm system and get to the point. Uh, uh, good ship, Phoenix, and all sentient beings aboard. This is the copy aid from the giant book of destiny. The giant book of destiny? You didn't think complicated, intimate, fragile things like your lives were left up to chance, did you? Destiny speaks English. Uh, but technically, no. The premises is equipped with a cool universal translator. You wouldn't believe the conversation I was having with the worm about. Ne- never mind that, Ace. Something important has gone missing. And no, we really I think would. Like, you should just get a Ace, good this is. Little friend, little would you stop it? The this is not the really time funny. to be doing no, this. We got and- Why did you break up with me, friend? Ace Galaxy, this is the editor of. The Giant Book of Destiny. An emergency situation has arisen and we need your help. Our coordinates are currently being fed into your GPS. uh, GPS? Galactic Positioning System. (sighs) Along with wormhole passages not available on regular maps. All will be explained when you get here. Phoenix, are you sure we're going the right way? That billboard over there says, Star system closed for repairs. Danger, keep out! I am following the course they programmed into my databanks. Well, that billboard says, Asteroid field ahead, do not enter. Wow, it's beautiful out there. Step on it, Fee. I cannot turn back. Impact with the first asteroid in three, two, one... Where's the boom? We passed right through the asteroid. It must be a holographic asteroid field. When this is over, let's go find a real one. Ace, we are on some sort of descent trajectory. My landing struts have been lowered. To land where? There's no planet or moon here, not even a holographic asteroid. This could be fun. These destiny people must have cloaking technology as well. Why would beings so advanced need our help? Unusual as it is around here, Mr. Galaxy, we were not sure if you were going to make it. Is that dog Felix? If you've called in a knitting fixated, non-thinking detective, you must be desperate. Could this emergency situation result in death? Destruction on a universal scale? Please call me Ace. You said that something went missing, so I thought a dog might be useful in tracking down whatever it is. (laughs) Is Destiny under renovation? Uh, uh, No, I'm sorry, we're under renovation. Everything you are about to hear is strictly confidential. We are building this soundproof room to discuss the situation privately. It'd be great if we had a soundproof room that we could discuss this situation privately. Copy aid, is the timer that you installed correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we now have four hours and one minute before lockdown comes to an end. Woo! I love this room. I could say anything I want about those prima donnas with the pens upstairs. And they can't hear me. Fran, we don't have time for your petty rivalry with the writers. And as for you, Mr. Galaxy, you're supposed to be conducting an investigation, not knitting a magnificent scarf. (laughs) Poppy Aid, this dick isn't up to the task. Find me another one. I knit... So that while my conscious mind is busy counting nits and pearls, my unconscious mind can process what I hear and formulate theories. Before continuing, I would like to clarify a few facts. So you listen, go away, think about what you heard, and then sleep on it all at once. Mm -hmm. That's pretty efficient use of your time, Ace Galaxy. Hmm. Choice, don't you think, copy aid? 
Fran, stop interrupting. Here at the Giant Book of Destiny, everything in creation is written down in a single volume. And edited. Hmm. Uh, except for the secret backup copy, which the two of you found during another emergency situation earlier today. Uh, as hard as it is to imagine, fact checker Fran here used the backup to uh, save existence and restore destiny. Good job. Oh. And half an hour later, she lost it. Oh, I'm grateful. After Destiny was restored, two beings came up to the office, both of whom had complaints about their destinies, a delivery boy and a librarian. I'm surprised it didn't occur to you to suspect either of them. We are editors. Very good at catching typos, not the criminally insane. Besides, there's no reason to suspect either of those beings when... They were here. Even I didn't know that the backup copy had been used to restore destiny. Uh, ma'am, what about Oris? Oris can't have taken the book. He has no hands. Oris? Who's Oris? Oris is the ear in the 12th Cup Cafe. He hears orders from all over the building and then gives them to Bob DeBrista, who has them ready on the counter. Does that mean there's no lineups in the mess hall? <laughs> My old crew would have loved that. Oh, oh, no. There's always a long lineup. Sometimes they go out the door and all the way to the first floor. But I thought you said the orders were ready by the time they got there. Uh, no, the, the coffee is not really that great. The lineups are to talk to Oris. He has a very sympathetic ear. So presumably Oris would have heard the gripes and complaints of everyone in the building. Uh, ma'am, when I came back from getting your coffee... Both Sylvie, the librarian, and the delivery guy were down there with Oris. Unravel the scarf needles. It's time to go. Copy aid? Take them to the bathroom. No need. I went before we got here. So the dog can get the scent off the backup copy bookcase? <laughs> Don't worry, ma'am. I'm sure we'll catch the culprit and restore destiny in the next three hours and 54 seconds. I'm glad you like the scarf. I knitted it for you. <sighs> Do you think he'll be able to save us, ma'am? No, we're doomed. But in case we're not, did you say he was single? I was two seconds away from fulfilling my life's purpose when the pleading cries of my alter ego infiltrated my program like a virus. Until my end finally comes, I take solace in the death and destruction of others. Phoenix, can you come away from Oris, please? You can finish talking to him after we've saved all of existence. You no, know, I have mixed feelings about this whole saving existence thing. Phoenix, you have the smell of office supplies. This way. Uh, Ace, I still think we should be looking for Sylvie the librarian. Both she and the delivery guy were within earshot when Oris mentioned the book. I mean, the delivery guy made a lot of noise, but Sylvie was devastated and, and desperate. Devastated and desperate don't equal speed. No, in the race toward their destinies, the wheel would have won. You know, Ace... Aside from putting the entirety of life at risk, I do not think Oris seemed like such a bad guy. Squirrel! He reminded me of Captain Petalserp. He just wanted to make things better for everyone. Ideally, I would have brought existence to its needs, too. For such a sympathetic listener, the guy really could run off at the mouth. No mouth, but we did speak to him longer than I intended. No, we've only got less than three hours left. Phoenix, initiate ten-minute alerts. Death Countdown! I love those! Phoenix, are you sure we're going the right way? The smell of office supplies is strong in the entire building, but in this direction I'm also picking up... Axel Grease! Of course! This is the way to the docking base! Hurry! Don't tell me you believe all that bleeding lobe stuff, V. Yes, I believe his sentiments were heartfelt. Oh, why does an entire star system have to be lost due to blight? Who says pain and suffering are such great teachers? 
Wouldn't it be better if we could all just sit around enjoying a nice cup of coffee, discussing philosophical questions about trees and things? He spends his days listening to heartbreak and complaints and transmitting coffee orders. He believed the delivery guy would use the backup coffee to make life better for everyone. I bet the little squeak promised the ear a whole body and a harem of other bodies to enjoy it with. If you had such a low opinion of Oris, why did you keep talking to him? He was a great listener. I'll have you know I keep a lot of things bottled up. Why are we stopping? We are here. Phoenix, are you sure this is the right docking bay? It stinks of anger and resentment. She means pens, ink, typewriter cartridges. Two hours, 50 minutes. So, did anyone else wonder if maybe he was waiting to shoot us with the ship weapons as soon as we got in here? Oh, the building's equipped with a dampening field that prevents the wet weapons from discharging. Uh, it's... Despite all efforts to stay hidden, destiny still attracts a lot of angry visitors. But you didn't know that. Why didn't you say anything before we came in here? And kill my fantasy? So I guess this whole dampening thing precludes shape-shifting into a gun and shooting our way onto the ship? Phoenix, I don't see any way in from the outside. Do you see a, an escape hatch or a docking port or, or some way we can get in? <sighs> no. Delivery guy, come out or prepare to be boarded. Hey, what do you know? It worked. Uh, he says he doesn't have what we are looking for. He hasn't said anything. Uh, no, it's all the spinning and the turning and the waving of the plank is sign language. The universal translator can't make heads or tails of it. No heads or tails, duh. Two hours, 14 minutes. Oh. Well, it's, it's beautiful, like some kind of interpretive dance. But I still think he would have gotten to the book first. He did, but he doesn't have it anymore. It's, it's, he says we can search the ship if we want to. Phoenix, search the ship and confirm what he's saying. Uh, signing. Delivery guy, where's the book now? Sylvie was waiting for me when I got back from retrieving the book. I didn't want to listen to her, but I couldn't go anywhere. She was so devastated it broke my heart. Oh, unlike that editor upstairs, I actually do have a heart. Mm. Mm. I gave Sylvie the book. She was confident lockdown bills lasted 24 hours and she could stay hidden in the library until it's over. And what about you? Oh, she promised she'd write me up a standard humanoid form. An ordinary head, a couple of legs. <laughs> That's all I wanted. <laughs> all clear, Ace. The backup copy is not in there. Two hours and 13 minutes. You know, we're in an unprecedented pocket of free will right now. You are a gorgeous dancer. Why would you want to be like zillions of other beings? No, if we manage to save all of existence before Sylvie writes you into ordinary, you should consider ditching the delivery business and rewriting a future for yourself as an artist. <laughs> wow. This library is massive. This crazy building is way bigger on the inside than it looks like on the outside. Is It is almost like a TARDIS. How many rooms did you say were in this cold, dark place? Uh, uh last count, uh, billions. Ooh. Two hours, 20 minutes. Uh, okay, Ace, this is... 
crazy. She could be hiding in any of these billions of rooms. Ten lifetimes wouldn't be enough to search this place. Would you like me to shapeshift into a ball of wool, Ace? No, I don't have time to stop thinking now. We need to find a way to narrow our search. Copy aid. Can you think of anything Sylvie might have said that might give us a clue? Ace, this is hopeless. What clue could we possibly find in something she said? Well, you said she liked to do the same thing the same way every single day. So? She even kept a destiny diary so she would know what to expect every single day. But what does that have to do with anything? Well, the loss of her fiancé and the stress of acquiring the book would have been huge disruptions to her regular routine. After that, she would need a place to regroup in familiar surroundings. Huh. Sitting at the same desk, with her tentacles arranged precisely in the same arrangement, waiting for the lockdown to end. Right. Do you remember what part of the library Sylvie said she worked in? Uh, no. Uh, she said she's an intern. Think back. There must be something in that noodle of yours. Even if it's trivial or irrelevant, something that might help. Trivial and irrelevant? Sounds like that's the fact checker's department. Okay, is she hates change. Mm -hmm. uh, she came here to write a destiny diary. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, today... Uh, to she did show me a page out of that Destiny Diary. Ah. Take your time, Pencils. We've only got two hours and 18 minutes with nothing else to do. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Uh, oh, she did show me a page out of that diary. Oh, and today, she was supposed to be creating reference material on God's third once-in-a-lifetime smiting of every living thing on the planet, Zonkus. Right. So she must either work in the planet Zonkis department or the God department. God smiting. Over a million rooms are dedicated to different aspects of God. Hmm. All right. We need to split up. Phoenix, can you shapeshift into a walkie-talkie? Sure thing, Ace. Fantastic. All right. How does anyone find their way in this place? Uh, did you see those banks of elevators when we came in? Mm hmm Okay, enter one of those, say where you want to go, and it will take you through the appropriate wormhole passages to your destination. Excellent. You take the God Department, I'll take the Planet Zonkis Department. Oh, wait. All of the librarians in here look exactly the same. Even if I find Sylvie, how am I going to know it's her? I don't know if even I would recognize her now, Ace. Except if she was blue. Blue? Yeah, like most cephalopod species, biblions can change color for camouflage. Now, I don't know why, but while she was in ma'am's office today, Sylvie turned blue. minutes? We are only in that elevator for a few seconds! We were going through those wormholes pretty fast. A few seconds for us would be over two hours for the rest of the building. <sighs> uh, Ace! Ace Galaxy, do you copy? <laughs> I'm here, copy aid! Uh, I've been looking for you for over an hour! <laughs> I'm sorry! We got stuck in the elevator, sort of. <laughs> Have you found Sylvie? No, she's not here. Do you see her, Ace? I don't know. There are three Biblions in here, all of them sitting at their desks with their tentacles arranged just so. You should ask one of them if Sylvie is in here. Sylvie! Or you could do that. Any luck? No, nothing. Phoenix! Do you remember the name of Sylvie's fiancé? Consulting my memory banks. Bogdan. His name was Bogdan. Sylvie, I was very sorry to hear about Bogdan. There she is! How do you know? She's blue! Ah! Ace! Ace, are you okay? I think that very large book she threw may have broken my leg. Phoenix, can you catch her? I cannot change shape without my other half. Two minutes! 
I heard everything through the walkie-talkie. Here is your other half. Go get him, Phoenix. Wow, what kind of bird was that? It's a giant chrono seabird. Should we follow them? No, there's no way we'd catch up with them. It's up to Phoenix now. How did you get up here so quickly? I thought it took two hours to get here in that elevator. Uh, I took the stairs much faster. Good work, Mr. Galaxy. And as for you, librarian, the writers and the scary beings in senior management will deal with you once they've read my report. Copy aid? Write the report. Ma'am, please. None of this was supposed to happen. I wasn't going to change anyone's destiny except my own. Ma'am? Yes, Mr. Galaxy. If I may, I've been thinking about everything that's gone on, and in accordance with the sign outside, I believe I can satisfy this situation to everyone's satisfaction. What? Joe's Pizza delivered hot and fresh anywhere in the galaxy within 30 years, or it's free? As a last meal. Good idea. Not that sign. No, the one that says, no refunds, no exchanges, all destinies are final. Copy it. What is the space dick talking about? Well, you see, ma'am, when you had your previous emergency earlier today, fact checker Fran had to make a change to the volume that wasn't in the original book. Yes, I did. Added a little extra meteor into the mix, hmm? Yes, I did. Wait, how did you know that? Because Sylvie's fiancé was killed by a meteor earlier today. <laughs> So you see, ma'am, according to your own rules, you need to erase that meteor in order to restore destiny to the way it should be. Copy aid, is what this dick just said correct? Uh, yes, I believe it is, ma'am. Fine. Get the paperwork done. Restore the fiancé. Erase all memories of the backup copy. And add Mr. Galaxy and that personality challenge ship to the index of the giant book under Space Investigators. Then get me a coffee. So, nothing's gonna self-destruct? Sorry, D. you will have to finish your countdown another day. Uh, Ace? Yes? I have a question. Yes? How did you get Sylvie to change color? Well, you told me that she turned blue earlier today when she was speaking with ma'am in the office about her fiancé. I merely surmise that while she might be able to uh, change color to camouflage, she wouldn't be able to hide her emotions. How did you know it would work, though? I didn't. No, I knew I couldn't count on destiny, though. Sometimes you just have to hope for the best. Copy aid, stop nattering with the space dick. There's a coffee with my name on it on the counter downstairs. Go get it. Space Dick at Large was written by Misa Basada. It was directed by Lolita Tanis and Misa Basada. The stage manager was Dave Cooey. The show was produced by Misa Basada as part of the Newmarket Festival of One Act Plays that took place in Newmarket, Ontario in October 2017. The editor was played by Marlo Alcock. Phoenix by Lisa Kalasma Davis. The Wheel and Captains Pedalserp and Yugglefritzer were played by J.C. Paquette. Sylvie and Dee were played by Stephanie Snyder. Ace was played by Paul Stafford. Copy aid by Nishant Varmani and fact checker Fran by Talia Zaloski. Live Foley was performed by Rod Urquhart and Scott Monteith. Music included Transatlantic Lovers by Jewel Beat, Four Klingon Love Songs by Bitter Tree, For My Love by Pond 5, Happy Elevator by Pond 5, Cool Cats by Kevin MacLeod in Comptech.com, who Likes to Party by Kevin MacLeod in Comptech.com. Tango de Manzana by Kevin MacLeod in Comptech.com. The Dun 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 sound came from Orange Free Sounds, orangefreesounds.com. Get the new Ace Galaxy app for $1.99 in the iOS podcast box or Amazon Android app store. 
Just search Ace Galaxy in the Amazon Android App Store or in the iOS App Store, search Podcast Box. Install the free Podcast Box and then search Ace Galaxy. The apps are $1.99 and a great way to support the show and get instant access to all the latest episodes plus bonus extras. For 11th hour this year, our collaborative team presents... feeling tonight. Mm. Oh, shh. No, 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 don't get up. Mm. I'm just, um, just fluffing these pillows a little, okay? Mm. I must have fallen asleep again. I'm still groggy. Is that you, Nurse Ruthie? Oh, nurse Ruth is the day shift nurse. You, you can call me Temp. Nurse Temp? Is that short for temperance? Yeah, let's have a look at your chart. <clears throat> oh, okay, Mr. Wilkins, you just had cataract surgery. Let's um let's have a look at your stitches. Really? Mm -hmm. We can get the gauze off already? Great. I feel like a mummy in this stuff. Oh, we can't have that. Let's give these poor tired eyes some air. No, you've got to keep them closed, but doesn't that feel better? I can't open them anyway, but yeah, it does. I guess that makes you a real breath of fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, if you don't mind my saying, you're awful young for such a procedure. Are you flirting with me, Nurse Temp? Maybe. Is it working? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You sound mighty cute. Well, maybe I'll just stick around and keep you company for a while, huh? You, uh, you won't tell on me, will you? If your boss asks, I'll swear I never saw you. <laughs> Shameless. <laughs> you should know. Pull up a seat. Oh, okay, well, I'll just move your dinner tray off this chair. <laughs> What happened? Well, I needed to get my eyes straightened out. I'm a photographer. Oh, for work or for fun? For both. I'm one of the lucky ones. I've had a couple of National Geographic covers. That counts as the big time for someone like me. For me too. But the right eye started getting blurry, so I got checked out and here I am. How responsible of you to come in and see the doctors early. Well... Won't get better on its own. Well, that's right, and well, that's exactly where we come in. And the procedure ran like clockwork, so now I just need to sit back, relax, and let everything heal like a good little boy. Ah, oh, see, that's the part that would be toughest for me. I, I know it's a little weird, but I love rubbing my eyes. You do? I do. It feels great, and I know we're not supposed to because the skin is so thin and delicate there, 
it's worse for ladies, you know. I've been using eye cream since I turned 18. So. Gosh, a whole week already. <laughs> oh, you. Uh, and they're so silly about it. All the, the magazines, they say, use your ring finger to tap on it lightly because that's your weakest finger. And I'm like, but isn't that giving my weakest finger a workout every day? So then which one should I use if my ring finger gets too strong, you know? Right. <laughs> and I, I wash my face in the shower and I try to just let the water bead off my skin and be nice and gentle. But, but sometimes I... I press my knuckles in there really hard and you can feel it kind of squish and then you see all the, the little black geometric shapes. Oh, it's the best. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah, that, that would be the hardest part for me, not touching my eyes. Um, for how long did you say? Until it heals up. At least six weeks, the doctor said. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, I am positive. I wouldn't have the willpower. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Here I am going on about something you shouldn't do. It's okay. It's no problem, really. I just... Uh, what? Well, it does itch a little. No. Really? Well, it's really not that bad. Really. Did they give you um, anything for it? Cause uh, I I uh, I got painkillers. Well, I don't know. I've been asleep. Let me um. Let me just look at your chart again, huh? Oh, boo! They put some cream on an hour ago, but oh, I can't give you any more for another two hours. Oh, that's okay. No, it sucks. Oh, sorry. You know, I just hate to think about you being uncomfortable. Itching is the worst. Yeah. But you're being really good. Thank you. And, oh, it will totally be worth it. <laughs> in six weeks. Yep. Or when you can have some more cream in 12 hours. I thought it was two. I know. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I misread it the first time. Man. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, 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 it's okay. It just... It really does itch. Aww. You know what you could do? What? I'm sure it would be okay. Yeah? Well, um, you know when you have an itch you can't scratch, like in the middle of your back, when you, you can't reach but you shift your weight so you're putting pressure on it instead and it feels kind of, kind of feels better? So, if I just put my hand over it, do you think it would be okay? Oh, yeah, that, that would be totally fine. That does feel a little better. Good. Oh, I knew it would. Thanks. You can move your hand a little, too. Oh, oh I think I heard a pop. Where? Oh, put your hand over it. P press down. What? No, I... It's fine, really. I... Uh, I think it's one of the stitches. It feels really weird. Yeah, I bet. Which stitch is it? Uh, I don't know. It's got one on each side, though. Well, aren't you going to find out where the end stitch is? I wasn't. But aren't you curious? You... You just want to know, to know, right? Oh, well, I am, but... Uh... Just to know, it's okay. Hey, I found it. I found the end of the stitches. Are you sure? Yeah. There's a little overlap, but feels like a knot. And, oh, this must be the end of the thread. Pull it. Ah, ah, what? Oh, why did you say that? Oh, I, I, I think I tore something. It's okay. Stay calm. It's fine. How much did you tear? I, I don't know. I can't see. 
Oh, man, it stings. Well, the doctors will have to look at it in the morning and may need to do some recovery, all right? The, the best thing to do now is is pull out the rest of the stitches. What? Why? So they can make a fresh start. And well, really, since you've started, what else can you do? I can't. I screwed up. I shouldn't have touched anything. Jeez, that really hurts. No, no, no. You can do it, Mr. Wilkins. You, you need to be brave and do the smart thing. I can't. I should wait. can you call someone? I will. Of course I will. But you need to finish what you started. You, you can't leave it like it is, Mr. Wilkins. Just just put your hand back. You, you can find that first piece of thread, can't you? Oh, God. It's bleeding. It's sticky. It's fine. That's why you need to work quickly so it won't get stuck. <laughs> now, find where the thread starts. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, you should be able to pull the thread out without tearing any more stitches if you work slowly and carefully. Can you do that, Mr. Wilkins? Oh, I hope so. I should never have touched it. I, I wish I was still asleep. Oh, it's okay. You're okay. Everything is going to be fine. Now, just pull. Oh, there you go. You're doing fine, you see? Oh, pardon the expression. It's working. It's working. I'm doing it. I, I've got the two stitches completely undone now. Good, good. But you, you may need to hurry now. The, the blood will start coagulating, so we won't be able to work. Uh, they're coming. It's getting sticky. You're right. How many stitches do you have left? Um, I think another seven. Okay. Well, that's not so bad. You know what you can do? What? You'll need to work something under the last seven stitches. Then you can pull them out all at once. What? It's fine. I, I do it with sewing all the time, like like when you drop a stitch. Then you can pull a bunch out all at once and be free and clear to start over, which is exactly what we need to do. Don't you want to be free and clear, Mr. Wilkins? But I don't have a needle or anything. Oh, no problem. I'm here. You can use your dinner fork. It's um, well, it's stainless steel, and it, it's only been in your own mouth, so it's still clean. You're sure about this? Well, I'm positive. This is exactly what you need to do. You do trust me, don't you, Mr. Wilkins? I, well... Mr. Wilkins, we need you to take care of yourself. You, you came here to get better, right? Uh, you, you, don't you want to be better? Uh, okay. Okay, here we go. God, could you're all set. Are you ready? I really don't know about this. Well, I promise this is exactly what you need to do, and you've come this far. You... I just don't want it to hurt. Oh, you'll be fine. I'll count to three, okay? Okay. One, two. Good morning, Mr. Wilkins. What are you doing? Mr. Wilkins, what did, what did you do? She said it would be okay. She said it would be fine. Ruth, oh, get in God. here now. Ruth, quickly. We need to sedate him. <laughs> Easy now, Mr. Wilkins. We'll do it would be fine. About. No idea. He was screaming and pulling at his own stitches when I came in. Could be a reaction to the anesthesia. Check his records. Oh, God, that'll cost us. Get him prepped for surgery. Maybe we can still save the eye. How are we feeling tonight? Oh, don't mind me. I, I just want to 
I will look at your chart. And, um, oh, vasectomy. Let's have a look at those stitches. Your ears have just wholeheartedly enjoyed Fidget by Ellie Maitland with Kareem Crompley as Mr. Wilkins, Sarah Golding as Nurse Temp, Catherine Seaton as Nurse Ruth, Daniel Ellett as Doctor, Robert Cudmore as Uncomfortable Grunting Patient, Sound Design and Original Music by Catherine Seaton. Directed by Sarah Golding. Co-produced by Sarah Golding and Catherine Seaton. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoy the other 11th hour horror story. Good night, wherever you are. And that's this week's show. If you love Fidget, be sure to check out Ellie's resident company, Wild Claw Theatre of Chicago, Illinois. Very soon, they present their annual international festival of short audio horror, Death Scribe. Love the name. Follow Wild Claw Theatre on Facebook or Twitter, and you will be able to see when their tickets go on sale. Their live performance is just a month away on Monday, December 9th, so don't delay. And don't delay to continue listening to the Mutual Audio Network as we have the Commons next up on this Sunday showcase. Anyway, for me and the Sonic Society, please join us next week for more 11th Hour production goodness and the much-awaited return of David Alt. Send us your comments at sonicsociety at gmail.com. Contact us at Twitter at Sonic Society. Check out the Facebook groups and from all of us here at the Society and the Mutual Audio Network, thanks for listening. I'm Jack Ward. Have a wonderful day. Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. Apparently you enjoy listening to audio dramas since you're hearing this message. I'll keep it short so you can get back to the fun stuff. If you would like to see and experience how all these stories, voices, sound effects, and music come together to create theater of the mind, make plans to visit the Modern Audio Drama Convention in Halifax, Nova Scotia, July 24th through 26th, 2020. Meet the creators. Find out how to write, record, mix, sweeten, and produce movies that play in your head. See what the voices you hear actually look like. We never look like we sound. For all the details, visit madcon.com. That's M-A-D as in modern audio drama, then dash as in dash on over, then con as in convention, duh, then dot as in it'll be the most fun you've had in a while, period, then com as in come on over, we'll love to see you. Madcon, your ears and brain will thank you.